Well, I couldn't very well go about doing more of the other kind of video without doing these farmhouse improvements. So, as you remember, maybe, or this is your first time back in like nine months. Um, the whole point of farmhouse improvements is to do quick videos that don't require a lot of editing. It's just extra stuff should you want it, need it, or whatever. Um, note that I'm going to be a little quiet because it's almost five in the morning. So, there's that. Um, I wanted to talk about getting a new synth and what you should do. This applies to sample packs just as well, but um, today I'm just going to talk about synths. So you'll notice here I've got Serum, and I've got one, two, three, four, five, I don't know, six sample packs. Um, actually, one was two, so five. The long and short of it is that when you get a new synth, um, there's going to be the just temptation to be just stoked and try to get as many presets and patches as you can, whether uh, you buy them, whether you download them, whether you just get individual patches from tutorials. That's all great and fun. Um, unfortunately, what happens is you just get way too many files. Um, so let me pull up, pull up an old synth that I haven't done this with. Let's go to Reactor, and this is Razor. So I, I think I got Razor with Contact. I'm sorry, uh, with Complete. Um, three years ago, something like that. And let's just look at what's going on here. Taking our time. Beautiful. So, uh, there's just so many. There's there's uh, 100 bases. There's 117 leads. 52 pads. 39, whatever, 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 and whatever. So, I mean, if I had to guess... Well, let's fix that. If I had to guess, I would say... We're in the ballpark of 500 sounds easily uh, within Razor. And I can't believe it's taken me so long to get to this point. And I'm kind of frustrated that now that's, that's where I'm at. But if you're not doing this already, for the love of God, do it. Listen to a sound and then decide if you like it or if you don't. And if you don't, then just... If there's, uh, I hope there's a delete function in this. Uh, and if not, then you're going to have to do what I'm doing with Serum. So let's pull this up. There we go. Uh, in Serum, <coughs> unfortunately, you have to delete everything manually. Like you have to actually go into the file spot and delete it. The plus side of Serum is that it's so much faster than Massive's loading process. If I delete a synth, I don't have to like reload the entire bay of sounds, which takes like, I don't know, five minutes a lot of the time. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, with Serum, every time you open it up and close it up, it's going to go to its preset folder area, and it's going to just quickly check, see what you got, and then, boom, you got it <clears throat> right over here. So, then there's the how to go about doing it. So, I've filtered one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine of these folders. And this one, for instance, for instance, for instance, uh, vintage synth pads had 160 presets and we're down to 42. So what is that? Uh, 164. This is dumb. I'm a math major. Uh, 25%, which is actually, uh, that's right, right on the money. Um, when I was doing this for samples, and that's what I've been doing for a long time, deleting samples, um, the first round, about a quarter of them is what I ended up saving. So with something like, uh, let's look here, um, effects, there might have been a hundred here, maybe a little bit, uh, maybe a little bit less. But you don't want to just delete one out of every now and again. Um, go with your gut. If you don't like it, you're not going to use it. For the love of God, just delete it. Anyways. So let's go through some leads, and then I'll tell you kind of what I'm, what my thought process is um, with keeping it or not. Oh, that's loud. Let's turn that down. Okay, um, I'm going to delete it for the following reason. It's got a nice crunch to it, but number one, it's the first sound, and odds are 
you get pretty excited about like firsts of anything. You know, you'll be like, oh, it's the first first sample in a new sample pack. Oh, it's the best kick I've ever heard. Honestly, it's probably not. If there's 150 kicks, you're probably going to find one that's better. So I try to go against that standard bias that's like, yes, keep it. Check all the ranges real quick and nope, delete. Next. Uh, delete, nothing special. Um, it is, you know, kind of one of those sounds that you would not say no to. Like, it's not bad, but my philosophy is if you don't use it in any point in any project, then it's a waste to have it. Um, for instance, you would need, you'd need to have a hundred projects and you'd have to use five different presets. We'll say, you know, a hundred projects, 10 presets in each one. Um, so that's going to give you a thousand patches. I guarantee you, you have so many more than a thousand patches in your library. Even if you have massive, um, you're probably going to have much more than a thousand, probably have, you know, tens of thousands. So if you're not using 1000 individual presets, you pro- I mean, you're probably going to recycle these patches over and over. Um, they're going to sit there in your hard drive and on your computer for years forever it's just a waste and um whenever you pick pull up fm8 whenever you pull up absinthe and you're scrolling through sounds you're just wasting clicks not a huge deal but that's that's where i'm at and that's what i'm doing so uh, moving on okay i'm thinking am i going to use this ever i like that A lot of these patches um, use noise unnecessarily, or a lot of it. So I try to give it a little bit of help if I can. Moving on. Uh, so we keep that. Not really doing anything for me. Kind of has the Melbourne thing going, but well, that's kind of on its way out anyways. So, oops. <laughs> Nice and plucky, but unfortunately, just a little too harsh. Not a fan. Delete. So, I think that's five patches. We've kept one. What the hell is this? What what am I going to use this? Oh, yeah. That's the worst thing ever. And so, if you look in your lower ranges... You can tell that's where it was designed, but still, it's just not, not great. Um, I take a, I take kind of a mental cataloging of the different variables. How useful is it overall? Personally, am I going to be able to use this in my productions? Number one. Number two, how clean is the sound? Um, is there a lot of distortion or noise, whatever? Um, number three, is there? a nice range that I can use it in. So is this sound going to work low, mid range, high up on the keyboard? Wow. Just get off this patch. And then uh, what else do I think about when I'm doing this? Um, And with the range that it's kind of supposed to be in, in this case, it's a lead. um, Is it just clutch? Is it clutch in it's one area? I would, I would much rather have a sound that works just perfectly in one note than like par or average in you know a bunch of notes a bunch of different spots nice clean oh thank god a lot of these a lot of these um serum patches just have just the reverb just everywhere so pass on that I'm not. I'm not opposed to growls and stuff. I design them, and that's all fun and games. But um, that's just that's just too much distortion and noise and stuff. So bail. Again, we've kept two so far. Very interesting, but I'm not going to go for it. It's not like it's 
It's not jumping out at me as like, ooh, dude, this is sweet. It's not an omnisphere level kind of sound. So, bail. And side note, you'll notice that my piano playing, keyboard playing is garbage. And that's fine. You're just jumping around and just trying to get a feel for it. Do you like it? And impulse, instinctively, would you scroll through these and say, hell yes, I like that. Um, so I'm going to leave a little place marker here. And it's important to notice. Um, let's see. Like for for this, we've only kept three out of maybe ten. 11 patches. Again, focusing on cutting down as much as we can. Now, the second thing to notice is that um, these are all colored yellow. I've never used these little tags before, um, before this whole filtering project. And it goes like this. If you filtered it once completely, it gets a yellow tag. If you filter it one more time, it gets a purple tag. Yeah, then we go purple. Boom. Then it, so then it should be almost you know almost nothing, and then once it is uh, all done, let's go over here. Done. So then once it is finally the third time completely finished, it gets green. Um, if you haven't started, it gets red. So that's the system that I use. And what's weird what's really weird is that every time I go through these, um, every time I get to a yellow like. Uh, I've already gone through it and then come back later at a different time, go through it a second time, getting it from yellow to purple. I realize I'll go through these and I'll be like, what the hell was I thinking? Like, why did I keep this uh, this sample? Why did I keep, keep this patch? And the reason is uh, what you're comparing against is a lot of garbage. You're basically, you're just like, oh, this is all garbage, garbage, garbage. Oh, cool, a sound that isn't the worst. Average par, subpar, ooh, cool, shiny sound. What is that? There it is. There's my 5 a.m. alarm. Um, so it's important to make sure that you're not just, um, that you're not just keeping that bias of like, oh, this was, this was better than the average. This is, um, once you get to yellow, this is your second draft, second cut. So make sure that you're comparing good sounds and try to take it a step further. You ultimately want, like, honestly, three patches out of 100. If you kept that, that's perfect. Like, that's gold. That's a little it's a little harsh. I would say, like, five to ten out of 100 is a good uh, keep landing spot. Um, that is going to allow you to open up that folder, and every time you get there, just go, yep, doing it. So um, that's all I have to say about picking up new synths. Take out the trash. There we go. That's the one sentence I'm going to say for this video. Take out the trash and do it a lot. Um, let me show you real quick my sample packs. Okay, so you can see a lot of Vengeance stuff. Standard, great. Um, these are all completely finished. I just put them in a green folder instead of having to worry about... Uh, you know, keeping this coloring thing going. Um, before, you'll know, if you know anything about Vengeance, um, you got hundreds of claps, hundreds of everything. Instead, now, let's go just look at something that's... I have these organized, too. Snares. Boom. Seven snares instead of a hundred snares. And four of these... 13 of these instead of 230. That's because there's just so many that you shouldn't be spending your time, your producing time, scrolling through sounds, especially if you have somebody in the room, like, you know, that you're collaborating with. Singer, producer, don't care. Last thing they want to do is listen to you go like this. Like, just, it's just not a very fun environment. So um, you want to be able to quickly, you know, not even have to listen to it. You want to just grab it and be able to throw it in and say, yep, I know that's going to work. So um, that's why within each folder, I also have my best samples, you know, list. So out of um, these two vengeance packs, I don't know, 4,000 plus sounds, these are my best hundred, period. So 
Um, I wish it hadn't taken me first vengeance pack I ever got was maybe seven years ago, eight years ago, six, who cares? I wish it hadn't taken me this long to actually go through it. Um, but now that I've done that for samples, I'm going to do that for all of my massive sounds, all of my serum sounds, all of my FM8 sounds, the whole deal. So long story short, that's a little bit more of the why and a little bit more of the background of what you're going for, what the end game is for doing all this. Um, when I've been producing lately, I can get a lot farther with a lot less. That's just, that's the name of the game. So, farmhouse improvements number four. And, God, how long are these? Oh, 15 minutes. Yeah, it's not that bad. So, um, I guess I'll be back with probably another taking out the trash update once we get to, let's go serum. Where's serum? Serum presets. Once we get this to purple, I'll try another one, see how far we've gotten. And that's what I got for you. Last, ah, damn it, I suck. Last thing on this. Um, the first step, I think, is something that I call indiscriminate progress, where you don't really know what's good and what's bad, and you don't really know what is interesting and what sucks, So, like, um, and what's boring. So when you're taking on a new topic, new instrument, new whatever, just get, you literally try to get your hands on as much as possible and just dive in for a quick minute. It's like taking, um, taking your general ed classes, like hop into college, boom, take as many classes as you can just across the board. That's something that you're like, I have no idea that might be kind of cool. Probably is going to suck doing it anyways. Um, that's not to say you should take five calligraphy classes. I don't know why I pulled up the Steve Jobs thing, but you know, you don't have to take five computer science classes. Just take one and see, quickly see. That's the same thing here. That's why I've got one, two, six, six of these quick um, presets. Without, I didn't really filter out, filter the process. I know that Plugin Guru, TuneCraft, very solid um, sound designers. So that helps if you know ahead of time. But even if you don't, just grab some stuff check it out but be ready to delete it otherwise it's going to sit in your um, sample library forever this might look kind of familiar for anybody <laughs> vengeance <laughs> central clubs three copy so this is my um this is what it used to look like you'll see this is just what i've used for years <sighs> the, the days of vengeance jesus <sighs> So let's let's just look here. Oh God, it's just so much. So this is before, and this is how this is how all my um, massive packs look too. I would you know uh, I think for Silent, which I did you know I did buy, um, it is so easy to get your hands on um, thousands of Silent sounds. So I still I haven't used Silent in um, probably over almost two years now because of the final cut 64 bit thing. Um, but yeah, long, long story short, take all of your samples and pick your favorite ones. Otherwise you're going to be spending a lot of time doing a lot of garbage. So see you next time.